Each year, more than a half a million people go to the emergency room for kidney stone problems, and they are common and affect approximately one in 10 people sometime throughout their life. There is no single cause, but Dr. Scott Ackerman, one of the First Coast's leading oncologists and doctors, has some advice and symptoms and what to know if you, I think you know if you have a kidney stone. That's what a lot of people say, it just kind of hits you, and it's a very painful thing. But first of all, let's kind of dive into how, how do kidney stones form? Where, where do they come from? So our kidneys filter waste from the uh, blood system and create urine. And that waste then is removed by the urine out the body as we urinate. Within the waste, there's salt and minerals that come from the foods that we eat and the, and the things that we drink. And these salts and minerals can f crystallize uh, st or stick together. <clears throat> once the urine is produced and if they stick together and become large enough they become a kidney stone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And these minerals are things like calcium oxalate, uh, uric acid, amino acids, those sort of things. And if they're just in the kidney that's one thing but when they drop down from the kidney into the ureter it causes some blockage, maybe partial obstruction of the ureter, inflammation around the ureter and they cause a lot of pain. So what symptoms should you look out for? Although I've known someone who's had a kidney stone, they said it was one of the most excruciatingly painful things that they've had to go through. Well, believe it or not, Casey, many kidney stones are asymptomatic. There's no symptoms. I see a lot of patients, I review their CAT scans with them, and I look through the CAT scans, and many times I see small stones in the kidneys that patients never knew they had. But when the stones leave the kidneys and go down the ureter, then they, and they go down the ureter and they block the ureter, it causes an excruciating amount of pain. As you said with your friend, mm -hmm. lots and lots of pain. I had a kidney stone about 15 years ago. I remember the pain was very, very severe. It felt like a, a cannonball was going through my body. It was just, just pain, pain, pain in, the, in, my, mm -hmm. in my flank. Uh, but typically, the pain is a severe pain in the back or the belly. It could be in the groin. There could be uh, frequent or painful urination because the kidney stone could, will irritate the ureter, causes the bleed a little bit. You may see blood in the urine. Uh, that pain or, or the, the inflammation around the ureter can be near the stomach or in the, near the intestines. It can make you feel uh, nauseated. You can even vomit. Usually they're diagnosed with an x-ray of the abdomen or a CAT scan. A CAT scan is really a good way of, of, of seeing exactly where these kidney stones are. Even an ultrasound uh, can help us find kidney stones. Um, if you've had kidney stones before and then you get one now or get one again and you say, oh, it's a kidney stone, don't always be so sure because these symptoms, the pain, nausea, those sort of things can mimic other more serious issues and things like appendicitis or a perforated colon. So if, even if you've had kidney stones before and you have symptoms that are similar to what you had before, you really should see your physician to make sure you don't have something more serious. Okay, if you go to your physician, you determine that it's not something more serious, it is a kidney stone, what does the physician then do to remove a kidney stone? Well, first they assess how big the stone is, either through a CAT scan or an x-ray. If it's small enough, it'll pass on its own, and that's the best way to just let it pass on its own. So he'll, the physician will give you some uh, pain medication to, to, so you can tolerate the pain, drink lots of water, <clears throat> hopefully it'll pass on its own. Sometimes the physician will give a patient some medications to help relax the ureter, especially if the, if the, if the stone is uh, borderline uh, in size. That'll relax the ureter a little bit and let the, the stone go down. Once it gets into the bladder, it, it usually comes out pretty easily. It's, it's that traveling through the ureter where it's a very narrow passageway uh, that's not very flexible where the stone causes uh, pain and irritation. If the stone's too big, um, there's, there's certain uh, options. One is to, do, uh, to direct high energy ultrasonic waves at the stone and that causes the stone to break up into smaller stones mm -hmm. and the smaller stones can pass more easily. Sometimes the urologist will go in through the ureter, through the bladder, and then into the ureter, through the urethra, through the bladder, into the ureter, and go in and, 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 and fetch or, or capture the stone with a little basket, can, 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 can pull it out. And, but rarely, but it does happen, the uh, urologist will have to go in through the abdomen, uh, into the uh, pelvis of the kidney, the first part of the ureter, or into the ureter itself, and surgically remove a stone if it's too large. So uh, are there certain risk factors that you have to, to getting kidney stones? Or is there something that I'm, we're doing that could lead to possibly getting one, or is it just happen? Well, if you have a family history of stones, it puts you at higher risk. So some of the things will put you at higher risk. Family history is one. Age, kidney stones typically, ha typically occur in people in their 20s, 30s, or 40s. 
You don't see it too often in people that are in their 50s or 60s, uh, or, or you don't see it in kids too often. Uh, people who are dehydrated, uh, who aren't taking enough fluids in, uh, that dehydration causes your urine to be more concentrated. More concentrated means there's more, you know, the minerals are all, are all in there and, and they can crystallize more easily. If you eat a diet that's high in certain proteins and calcium, because we have calcium stones, sodium, sugar, you can develop a kidney stone. People who have had a kidney stone before have a higher likelihood of, de of developing one again. If you have a kidney stone and you're uh, able to capture it, your physician can have it analyzed, uh, do a chemical analysis of it, and find out what it's made of and maybe give you some guidance and advice of changing your diet so you can avoid subsequent stones. Yeah, which is always good advice if you can avoid yeah. that twice. And real quick, we're out of time, but does it affect men and women about the same? Or yeah, about the same. It seems to me, I don't know the exact data, but I think it's more prevalent in men than it is women. It seems like it is. Maybe men just complain about it more. Maybe that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, they sure. say that it's the male <laughs> version of childbirth. There you, you know, we got to equal it somehow. <laughs> right. All right, thanks so much, Dr. Ackerman, for being here and, of course, for sponsoring this segment. And for questions regarding today's topic or any other health questions that you might have, you can connect with Dr. Ackerman on Facebook by visiting facebook.com forward slash First Coast Oncology.